What is going on, Bulls Nation? So the Bulls apparently are gauging trade prospects for Zach Levine. So we're going to talk about this, what his value is, what should we trade him for right after this. Get the lowdown on one of the most iconic basketball teams in the world. You're listening to Chicago Bulls Nation. All right, Bulls Nation. So this this was um, a little bit of a, a surprise for me because we all know that this front office is very secretive when it comes to their moves. They're very quiet. All of a sudden, you see DeMar uh, going to your team, you know, Vucevic, all of a sudden, it's a Chicago Bull. So this is a surprise. Maybe this is not real uh, because the it, it just doesn't seem like this is a front office move, at least this front office for the Bulls. And also, it's not smart. I mean, I get it. You're doing your due diligence. You're supposed to explore every option. I mean, after the season that you just had, you should be willing to trade anyone and everyone on this team. But you got to do it in silence, especially if you're talking about your main guy on the team. Because the last thing I want to happen is that nothing materializes. And Zach is always at the center of trade rumors every year regardless of you know it, it whether it's his his health his the how much he makes and all that stuff and i get it i get it we have high expectations for zach you make that kind of money you're supposed to produce that kind of you know production uh but i get it i get it but the fact of the matter is he is our most valuable player on this team yes he is he's younger you can make an argument that demar is better and you you might win that argument i'm not even going to argue with that but zach has to, when i say valuable i mean that in trade assets and, and everything because of his youth his his potential and all that stuff he just is at this point in his career more than demar with that being said when you leak something like this out in the open and Zach is already feeling one way towards this organization. It's if nothing happens, and let's say we don't trade him, I just don't want that awkwardness uh, looming around. And I know he's a professional, and he should expect this at all, right? You know, you, you should be in the center of if you're if you're making this much and you're a professional athlete, you should expect something like this. But you know, Zach already put his displeasure out there with a the front office with, with the true trade rumors and whatnot so i i if you are exploring trade possibilities for zach thank you because you should be doing that uh but do it in silence you know set the set the standards high i i wish that the front office would come out and say you know what we're not looking to trade zach uh, no one's untouchable in this team however if the right uh you know package approaches and it's a very high package and it should be because zach is younger i i think zach's value is a lot higher than beal bradley beal is older um he played less he's always injured as well same as zach you know zach when zach is is healthy he would play well you know so after the all-star break we all know what happened there um so we'll see what happens in this bradley beal scenario I don't know if if we're going to wait for him or we are going to set the tempo. But I would say this, Zach without a trade clause, like a no trade clause, making less and also younger and quote unquote healthier than Bradley Beal. Uh, he should have more value than Beal. I'm not expecting a Donovan Mitchell kind of haul. You know, I'm, I'm more realistic here, but I'm looking somewhere in between that range where no pick swaps, perhaps, you know, maybe a young talent and then two first rounders without a young talent, maybe three first rounders. No pick swaps, probably with some protection out of those three first rounds, you know, like a, a lottery protection on one of them. But you don't trade Zach just for trading Zach. And I know a lot of Bulls fans are frustrated with Zach at times, but the reality is he's coveted especially by by other teams you know the teams that are looking for a spark plug a second third scorer out there you know second star he is that he's not the main guy but you got to pay him as the guy just because we don't have a guy so we keep him you don't trade him for trading him if the right package doesn't come out honestly if if there's any way we can get into the top three of this draft 
even without young assets, I'll do it. You know, for example, for Charlotte or Portland, you give the third and just give us whatever salary it is that you don't want. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Even though I was expecting more draft picks, it's because of how high and how talented this bunch is. Uh, if Dame really wants to win now, give him Zach as his running mate. Heck, give us whatever trash you do have in your third pick. You know, whatever salary dump you need to do, give it to us, the third pick, and we'll call it the day, you know? Um, I guess it's not really a salary dump if you're doing Anthony Simmons because that's only their high salary kind of guy. But, hey, you know, if it's Charlotte Hornets, for example, and they want to sh- take a crack at Zach Levine and get the second pick, you get that, you get Gordon Hayward in return and, and get the second pick and call it the day. You know, I'm, I'm okay with that kind of package. As long as I do have a shot at, at you know, one of those top picks this year. I know it's not going to be Wemby, but if it's Scoot or Miller, I'll I'll take I'll take a shot at that. You know, honestly, I would. Uh, are they going to be better than Zach right away? Of course not. But that that is a good starting point. Now you have a foundation. You put him, you pair him with DeMar. Uh, maybe you sign DeMar for another two years just to mentor the guy and make DeMar kind of like your leader for the next two, uh, two, three years, for example. Not for Max, though. No, no. Mm-mm. You, you sign DeMar for a team-friendly contract if he ever accepts one. If he doesn't, let him walk. Uh, you can build, like, so let's say you get Scoot, you get DeMar, Scoot, and Vooch. That could still compete. Uh, and that would, I would say, if you get a young talent like, like Scoot, you would accustom him to winning right off the bat. Because that team, I think, is still good enough uh, to get into the either play-in or playoffs like a later seed. And then once Demar and Vooch rides off to the sunset, then it's going to be, they're going to transition to, let's say, Scoot's team. And, you know, but hey, man, I'm dreaming here. But we'll see what happens. But yeah, there's a positive and negative here. Mostly negative. I wish the Bulls would come out and say, we're not shopping Zach, even though they are shopping Zach. And I wish... They are shopping Zach because that's the right thing to do right now. But thank you for watching Bulls Nations. Hopefully you like this video. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.